First off, this is Rust of the Max Extra number 28, and this is all about XT TakeOver Dallas, which, Gary, you and I were live there for it. That's right, we were, and it was a great show, and a lot of exciting things happened, and man, I mean, it, there was so much involved, uh, I, I just, you know, you just want to explode talking about it, because, <laughs> I mean, there was some prizes, there were some people there in the audience that you're getting just lollygagged and happy and excited about you're praying and wishing things would happen uh so all around this show was a lot of fun and i was glad that we did get a chance to be there live sean and uh paul you know you got a chance to watch it on the network so mm. you got a chance to do that so i mean I, I think for the most part i think we're all pretty happy with the product we got tonight uh, i i don't know how you couldn't be but uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is so much in this two hours of show um, yeah, there's, I, I really can't wait for us to dive into this one. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, and just to let everybody know, uh, you know, we're doing an extra tonight for NXT TakeOver Dallas. So uh, we will be doing a WrestleMania post show following WrestleMania. Uh, so don't forget about that. We want to make sure that you guys get a chance to hear that. Plus the Dallas version of Raw that follows Mania. That's right. We're going to cover that as well. So, We've got a lot of cool stuff coming your way this week, and this is just one of them. And so we're going to get into this thing uh, pretty fresh and pretty ready. Uh, before we jump into the card, though, I want to throw out some uh, things that happened pre-show. And Sean and I got a chance to kind of walk in on the middle of one of the last dark matches, which was Elias Samson and Apollo Crews. And it was okay for what we saw, Sean, but, I mean, really, uh, this is something I think we're going to see more of. This is just a chance for, I think, people to have fun, get a chance to see this kind of before anybody else does. Uh, but Apollo Crews does go over on that one. And sadly, Sean, we missed another wrestler we really wish we would have saw. Yeah, they did have a Manny Andrade, uh, the Sombra, whatever you want to call him, against a uh, Christopher Gerard, Biff Busick, who we've seen once. On NXT, I'm pretty sure the Elias Samson and uh, Apollo Cruz match will be on uh, Takeover, or not Takeover. It will be on uh, the one of the episodes of NXT, yes, some kind of main event or something, mm. because you know it it was supposed to be on NXT itself. So mm -hmm. right. kind of weird that they wouldn't have it on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, you know, it sucks that we, we it would have been our first time getting to see. Uh, Manny Andrade wrestled, so... Yeah, uh, it's just, you know, one of those things, you know, we, we try to get to the show on time, we thought we had plenty of time, well, things don't always work out that way, a ridiculous line, if you ask me personally, yeah. uh, we had to walk legitimately, we get to the K. Bailey uh, Hutchinson Center, and we're pretty much thinking you're going to go into the doors, you're going to find a place to go in, go into the, the you know, the big uh, room there for the, the whole show, and... We actually walked past an entire line all the way down the entire hall to turn around and go right back the same way we came. That was kind of silly, but I think it was for security reasons, which I totally get. You know, it's just one of those where you're like, come on, you're going to make me late, which they did. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about the cool stuff on this show. Let's go ahead and talk about the first match on the card, guys. And we have the Revival facing off against American Alpha. And boy, what a way to start the show. And <laughs> Paul... What a pop for American Alpha that My, this crowd gave. The the amount of energy inside this building throughout the whole show, but especially here, um, mm -hmm. 
you know, just, just out of control. American Alpha is so over. And, and, you know, you it's not like, you know, you didn't see it coming with the way they've been performing on NXT. But, I mean, just the, the pop was ridiculous to the match. I, absolutely incredible. This is probably the best tag team match I've ever seen on NXT. Uh, takeover or television or in, in any form of fashion. You know, just totally, totally knocked it out of the ballpark with this one. American Alpha get the uh, the amazing win, um, and, and you know tears in the crowd and just you know it all came to it's amazing opener, amazing amazing opener. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know Sean, as we sat there and we heard, we were a part of that pop because I know we were both stoked about seeing them, and of course the revival are, are great for their own reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely love those guys; they're great heels. They play the part well. Uh, we've heard the comparisons that you know to the. The Andersons, which is very true. Mm-hmm. These guys are very much like the Andersons, and I uh, really thought they did a great job here. Uh, there were several times in this match I felt like the Revival were going to win. I really did, and uh, that shows that this match was definitely one of those win-wins, and uh, I don't know how they're not going to be uh, in big contention for our Superstar of the Week this next Thursday. It's mm-hmm. going to be very hard not to get those guys. We still have the whole WrestleMania to talk yeah, about. We're, we're one day <laughs> in. It's already looking impossible. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not including all the shows, guys. And we're just talking about this one show tonight. We're not talking about Evolve. We're also not talking about Ring of Honor, which Paul got a chance to enjoy all the Ring of Honor shows. Uh, a big uh, super show or uh, super card. Super card, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we're going to be getting into this week that it's going to be hard to vote on, but that's, at least this match right here is one of them. And Sean, I mean, really, what did you think legitimately as you watched this match and you saw the way it progressed? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, of course we are doing the, uh, Facebook Live as well if you're awake at basically 5 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time for some reason. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, it was, it was incredible. It was just them coming out there and saying that there's, you would expect maybe they're going to start off the show. The, I mean, the whole crowd was in, intense to see them. And then it was just, it was so many things, like just, just the little things, you know, the revival talking to each other here and there, you know, just knowing that they're totally in it on the strategic end. It kind of sucks that they had a couple of botches, you know, and the crowd obviously let them know. Um, we we do have both perspectives here, you know. We watched it live, and then we came home. We loved the show so much. We came home, and uh, of course, Paul was gonna watch it anyway. We said, "Hey, Paul, come over here," and we all watched it together afterwards. So we we were giving you both perspectives of having been there and also having watched the the thing on the network as well. So it's um it's one of these things where just the American Alpha they're amazing. And Chad Gable, he does so much with so... He doesn't have to do everything that's so flashy. He makes so simple moves flashy, you mm-hmm. know? And he makes just these things that you would say, oh, you know, if anybody but him did them, they, they, would, they would be the same. And he, he gets those, you know, the, the Kurt Angle, Gable chants and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And Jason Jordan has been, just been so good. He's been so good at, at the, learning how to master the hot tag and... Shoot, I think Brock Lesnar has some a competition for those suplexes now. No, yes. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Very true. And, you know, as we, you know, uh, look at American Alpha and where they're going and the, the way that they're progressing, I mean, it's exciting to see. And I think all of us are kind of thinking, man, these guys definitely have a big future here. Uh, you know, since we are basically at the, I, I would say, uh, part of the end of the year kind of restarting for uh, NXT because this is WrestleMania, kind of, you know, new talent comes in, talent leaves. Uh, I want to break down this real quick and kind of get our evaluations on each of these tag teams because I think American Alpha is definitely on their way up. Mm -hmm. I mean, just by seeing this, it's definitely a yes, but I don't think that the Revival are going anywhere. I think these guys are going to stay in contention. I think they're going to stay strong. Uh, Paul, I mean, where do you see them going as, as this year continues? Yeah, you know, I don't know if we see either of these teams up on the main roster by the end of the year, just because I think Enzo and Cass leaving, and, and, and I mean, granted, it's a you know Saturday morning at four o'clock here Central Time. We don't know if that's official yet, obviously, but with Enzo and Cass look imminent to show up on Raw this coming Monday. I don't know if you want to take. 
because they're, they're a large part of your tag division. I don't know if you want to add a couple more hits there with your two top teams now because you haven't really had anybody else step forward, and the Vaudevillains are just kind of there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I, I, I would think they'd stay in NXT for the rest of the year, personally. Uh, well, I mean, just staying on that point, where do you think in NXT, how do you think they're going to evolve? I mean, uh, because... But guess where I'm going here is, are, are these guys going to be NXT Tag Team Champions for uh, half this year? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to be flip-flopping these titles between themselves, the Revival, and maybe another tag team? I don't know if NXT is really a place that does those flip-flop things. You know, we haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't mean that they can't. And obviously, if we get more matches like this, I would not all be opposed to them doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, I think NXT is really sort of set on you give the championship to somebody, no matter what division, and you see how well they run with it. So, you know, probably American Alpha get a, what, four, like, I think five months right now is sort of your basic, your basic run before you hit, hit a stop gap or something like that, or you go further. Um, so, you know, I think American Alpha have a good long run with it. I don't see their popularity, like, as of this moment, their popularity is not going to wane anytime soon, you know, so... Exactly. I agree with you totally, 100%. And Sean, I mean, we got the Revival on the other side, and the Revival are a group that I think a lot of us can be behind now. Where do you see them going? Uh, you know, the Revival, I mean, this, they're, they can kind of match up with anybody because they're your heels that they have, right? Mm -hmm. They're uh, that team that you can go and you can say, okay, well, they're, they're those dirty heels. They're going to work on the body part. They're going to do those slimy things. And you're you're totally good with it. They can they can work with anyone. They already saw it with Enzo and Cass. Actually, they made Enzo and Cass have to kind of suit to their level, right? Mm -hmm. And they they still couldn't beat them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it, that's the cool thing about the revival is there's they're not they're not flashy. There's nothing like you're gonna say, oh my god, I'm totally watching them because they did this cool thing or that cool thing. But they they work with anyone. Mm -hmm. So you can match them up anywhere and. I don't know what they necessarily have to have the titles again. They, you can certainly transition it to them if, you know, let's say Vince does wind up liking a Chad Gable and saying, okay, we really want him, mm -hmm. you know, and it pulls him up there as much as maybe we don't want to see it. But uh, it's just, it seems like it's the, the writing is certainly on the wall for Chad Gable. If you don't, if, if Vince doesn't see that and go, hey, uh, this guy's going to be somebody, I don't know what he's thinking right now. So yeah. you, I don't know that they're going to be around very, very long in NXT, but I don't see them losing the belts until that moment when maybe they, unless there's some other hot tag team that they, possibly maybe Mighty Don't Kneel when they come, mm -hmm. if they get over big, you know, um, depending on, it seems like Guns and Gals are pretty much going to be main roster bound from the start, so we won't see them. Yeah. But, uh, other than some big tag team coming in that we don't know yet, mm -hmm. I think uh, you're going to see them hold those belts for a while. But I think they're a viable or fine for what they're what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, I, I think the tag division right now is still pretty strong with both these guys, you know, showcasing the way they did tonight. And I think we're going to have some other tag teams that you could definitely hold that credit to as well. Uh, let's move on to the next match on this card, uh, and we have, of course, Baron Corbin facing off against Austin Aries. Now, Aries is pretty fresh to this company. Uh, he's not been here very long at all, uh, has not had uh, much to really hang his hat on, let's be honest. Uh, we're really fresh with this guy, so fresh that I don't know how you would feel about him if you did not follow his career in TNA mm -hmm. or Ring of Honor. Uh, that's something that I kind of worry about at times when I'm watching this because it was hard to be really motivated about a guy that where's the background? Mm -hmm. Where's the story? Um, but that brings us to this match alone and I, I think it was pretty well done. The uh, final outcome is Austin Aries does get the victory and does win this um, not without getting battled and bruised and all that good stuff because Baron Corbin did take care of him uh, quite a bit in this match when it comes to beating him up. I don't want to know what you think, though, on this, Paul, because with Aries winning, I get it because, you know, he's new. I don't get it because of the fact that Corbin is the young guy here, and, you know, I kind of think that he's the one that should be getting that little push. Mm. I, and, uh, I mean, that's totally fair, and that's the way they're going to go eventually. But this is the first match. It's very much one, I think, to start the feud. You mm -hmm. know, you have the attack, and now you have um, 
Aries get the 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 very nice reversal out of the end of days into the into the roll up the in you know one two three, so I mean it's very much a pinfall. I think that's just meant to extend the mat, you know the feud to however long they want to. Um, I do think you bring up a very interesting point though about how little interest it feels like a lot of people had about the match, and that's because NXT has so much going on around it right now. You had Shinsuke showing up today. You had. Austin Aries showing up, you have the Global Cruiserweight thing happening, and that's sort of permeating NXT in its own little way, because now you have all these people wondering and guessing, and, you know, Lord knows what else, yeah. about who's going to be in this thing, who's, who, who could show up on NXT, and you, you get a little piece of that tonight, too, whenever they show Kota Ibushi on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's, it's insane. And, and there's just so much happening that, I mean, somebody of the caliber like an Austin Aries is getting swept under the rug. And then that's mind-boggling almost. But when you have everything that you have going on around NXT right now, I mean, there's no there's no promotion or pseudo-promotion or whatever you want to label NXT as that's hotter right now. And when you have all this activity, it's just Austin Aries is getting swept under the rug almost. Yeah. You know, and going back to that, I think you do bring up a point here that I really maybe not consider the fact that we can continue this feud and it can be something, you know, I, I kind of looked at it more of a, you know, a flash in the pan kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're just going to get Austin Aries in the door. This is just a quick feud. We can throw it together. Why not? But there could be more here. Maybe that's how you do build Austin Aries story. Maybe he can take the time to tell everyone who he is, what he's about, mm-hmm. why Corbin should worry about him, why Corbin should respect him. And maybe Corbin, uh, you know, continues this and maybe brings more to the table. So, I think it's a good thing. I mean, Sean, I mean, from what you saw at Austin Aries in this match, I mean, how do you feel like he did? I think Austin Aries did fine. He, you got his greatest hits. You know, you got all the things that he does. Um, I don't think Austin Aries is a problem here. I think Baron Corbin, at times, uh, you know, he's limited. We know what he is. Um, he has certainly improved. Uh, from what he used to be, uh, but I, I honestly I'm at the point where I think the nerve hold needs to be outlawed at this point. <laughs> really like certain people, it just it doesn't work. Yeah. I, I think you know, especially for a guy like Brandon Corbin, like he does an end of days, he does um, you know other moves that are sort of flashy for his size, those power moves, and no, that's right. You, not everybody needs to be do those, but you have those kind of sort of boring. Uh, rest holds in those moments for him and it's a very prolonged beat down that's not uh, very exciting at all and people sort of lose it. Mm-hmm. You know, also, you know, it's, it's a little bit of come, come down from the match before where people were really excited and mm-hmm. uh, you kind of knew what you were going to get there but it was okay, just certainly, sadly, the worst match on the show. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, that speaks volumes though because the show had a lot of good matches and this wasn't terrible, right? You know, it was it wasn't perfect. It, it was the worst one, but it, it was not a train wreck. Uh, clarifying that, so, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, I, I think the we all know what's going to happen with Austin Aries. I think mean, Austin Aries is a veteran. He's going to put people over. He's going to basically add some spice to this NXT roster. But he did. He did. Uh-huh. Uh, unlike Apollo Cruz, who is the younger guy. Yeah. He lost the Grand Corbin, and Apollo and Austin Aries won. Mm-hmm. True. So. That is true. Uh, but, you know, looking at Corbin, uh, I, I think he's got still room to grow. He's a good wrestler for being, you know, uh, an ex-football player uh, for what he can do. Um, I, I think his battle still, and he's getting better. I, I want to say that he is getting better because I've been kind of impressed with some of his promos as of late. Uh, but he's still got to get more entertaining. He's still got to lively up or do something to get us really behind him of some way. Because right now you kind of can get lulled to sleep. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a bad thing as Paul yawns of thinking about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, but, I mean, I legitimately, Paul, looking at Baron Corbin, do you see some positive things coming out of this? Or are we just going to get what we get out of Baron Corbin? Is there any upside? You know, the thing that's really almost ingenious about this feud that, that Corbin has had, he's working with guys like Apollo Crews, he's working with guys like Austin Aries, he's working mm-hmm. with Samoa Joes, he's working with Finn Balor, guys who have been wrestling for 
you know, 8, 10, 12 years, he's got to learn something from these guys working with him mm-hmm. or he shouldn't be here, you know. And I think he very clearly has. His his presence in the ring has grown. Um, and you saw some of that tonight. Like, he didn't used to be this vocal, um, you know, smack talking with the crowd or, mm-hmm. or um, you know, smack talking Aries. Mm-hmm. And I think there, there's he's certainly come along way there. So, I mean, I certainly still do think he has room to grow. He's only been in the business a couple of years. Um, you got a lot of time left in there, kid, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, and a lot of the guys he's stepping in the ring with have been on the indie circuit maybe four times that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's a learning curve that he's still going on where these guys have been there, done that. So, I agree with you. He is improving for sure. Uh, moving on though, guys, we got to talk about the big match on this card. It's probably the most exciting match for most fans, especially if you for follow New Japan. Uh, we have Shinsuke Nakamura and of course, who? Sami Zayn. That's right. These guys face off in a battle of wits, a battle of just pure talent. If you want to say it that way. Uh, wow. Uh, that's all I can say. Paul, wow, what a great match. Uh, you said it while we were watching it. You said, if that's not five stars, I don't know what a five-star match is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, really, this apparently blew you away, blew me away. You know, Sean, I mean, we were there. We just got to sit back and enjoy this great, great match. I mean, when you you know get a chance to see this, I mean, if you have not seen this yet, hopefully you are since we're reviewing it, and hopefully you've already seen this, but you just sit there and think, man, Wow, Sami Zayn, Nakamura, these are guys that are the future of the WWE. Mm-hmm. Even though they've both been in the business a while, they're still going to be the guys leading the way and making this pathway for great wrestling. Yeah, Paul? Yeah, it's uh, it's a match that leaves leaves you breathless. It's a match that involves you emotionally because not only is this uh, Shinsuke's you know, debut into the WWE and he's very clearly going out of his way to put his best foot forward and show you everything he's about. Because, you know, the wheel ain't broken for him, you know? Mm -hmm. Everything he did in New Japan, if you watch New Japan, everything he's done throughout his whole career is is on on display in this match. Turned up to, you know, 12, because he's already turned up to 11, just being who he is. Um, And Sami Zayn, of course, this is probably his last dance in NXT... And, you know, you have all of that working with him, and he's trying to get this guy over to a new new audience. And, I mean, just, and he's trying to show, hey, man, this is why you're promoting me. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it just comes together in this wonderful, wonderful match. I mean, like, they, they took five minutes of just throwing elbows, and the crowd's still going bananas for him. Uh, and, and, you know, the hug at the end, like, almost like Sami Zayn's way of saying, you know, keep this place sacred, kid. And then... And Shinsuke's like, alright, and he walks out. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and yeah, I, match of the year. Yeah. Ma- oh, wow. Ma- that's saying a lot. Because I know you got that list, Paul. I, uh, that's yeah. the best one on there right now. Wow. Oh, that's pretty impressive. And we haven't hit WrestleMania yet. We haven't hit the Raw after. Yeah, this is day one. Yeah, day one. I saw a lot of great wrestling today. This is day one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. Let's see, and so this, this is exciting. This is why we love WrestleMania weekend. Right. So there you go. Uh, you know, and, and Sean, I mean, you've been a big proponent of Shinsuke Nakamura. You've talked a lot. You, in fact, I knew you were excited. You, you like, Gary, it's happening. You know, we were both pretty excited about it. Uh, so excited that we and Sean both wore shirts, which thank you to Sean. You bought me a shirt, and I'll go ahead and stand for people on Facebook Live who can see it. Yeah. Uh, King of Strong Style. So uh, we wore these shirts proudly. See, and I had the red one. Yeah. So, you know... It's, uh, I mean, it was exciting. I think yeah. anybody that knows and has watched him at any moment, I don't know how you cannot uh, be excited. I had, you know, Gary and I went to McDonald's before uh, we went to the arena, and I had about two or three people saw the shirt, and they're like, man, I've never seen him wrestle, and uh, what's he all about, and everything. I was like, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I want you to experience it, and when you're done, there's no way you're not going to enjoy him, and mm-hmm. And say, I want to watch another match of his, you know. And like Paul said, you've watched New Japan. You got everything that is Shinsuke Nakamura in this match. And, you know, I mean, different music. But I, I, I really, what did you guys think of the, of, the, of the music? I enjoyed it. You know, we played a little bit of it at the beginning of the show. And, uh, you know, it obviously shows that he had a little bit to do with it. It's not, you know, 
uh, WWE trying to do something with it or, or trying to copy uh, subconscious or anything. They certainly made it stand out and be different. I mean, uh, you know, what what did you think, uh, Gary, being there, hearing that? I thought it was saying, great. I mean, hearing the original, the original was really awesome. But to have this, to have a little bit of taste of the original but not be that complete original, it, to me, it was still a beat. I was a little bit worried, to be honest with you. I was mm -hmm. kind of a little worried that they were really going to make it, it was super Asian, you know, really kind of make those undertones and just kind of really keep it in that. But no, they didn't. They they made it pure. They made it just a great mix match. It, to me, Paul, it worked out. But, you know, you've been hearing his music for a long mm -hmm. time. How did this feel hearing this new theme? I think it works for what WWE likes to do. Um, it's violins meets techno, so it's sort of like classic meets new school, um, which is, you know, Shinsuke all over. Um, but, like, the way you watch him enter the arena, like, they have the strobe behind him, and he's doing all these, you know, his crazy hand poses, and it works well with the with the violin beat, and, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's home run. I think it's really good. Yeah, and I mean, it just... Uh... You know what, this is one of those times, I think, anybody that hasn't seen this match yet, I think you've seen it, go watch it, and experience it for yourself. I mean, it's just, yeah. there's, there's so many things, that, being in the in the crowd, and just, this is one of those times where, as, uh, you know, everybody that loves those wrestlers, and the the crowd that just is going to be into anything, if, if Shinsuke would have sat there in the Indian-style pose for five minutes, I think the crowd would have been going nuts, you know, it's just... But they went out there, they had an awesome match, uh, both of them looked strong in it, uh, you know, both of them were violent, it was stiff, mm -hmm. it was everything you wanted to be, everybody mm -hmm. was worried about, oh my god, they're going to make Shinsuke be this toned down guy, and we're not going to see any of the stuff that we saw, we saw everything, yeah. other than, I think the sliding Boba Yeh was the only thing we didn't see, <laughs> I mean, and uh, I mean, what, what do you guys think about them uh, changing the, obviously this is another... Uh, WWE thing, but they changed the name uh, to represent. Uh, it's called the Kanasha, which is the. Uh, it would be the city in Zaire where uh, the Rumble in the Jungle took place between Muhammad Ali and uh, George Foreman. Mm -hmm. So. What do you, you think of that, Paul? I, I I question why, but it it you know, a rose by any other name would smell sweet. I think I said that last time we did the podcast, but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean. Apparently, Muhammad Ali has some kind of... I, I obviously, Inoki has the tie. That's mm -hmm. the Bomaye thing, but uh, Muhammad Ali obviously has that tie, too. So, mm -hmm. it all kind of goes together. You know, did you yeah, think... Yeah. Hey, I mean, we're so used to it being called that, but... He's still doing the knee, the knee to his face, so... Yeah. You know. uh, yeah, and it, man, it looks just as violent as ever. Uh, you know, and I, I just think overall, I mean, everything we saw... Uh, Nakamura tonight, and of course, even Sami Zayn himself, I mean, it was gold, <laughs> and, you know, you felt like, you know, if you had never seen any of these guys fight at all, uh, you you got the whole story tonight, so. And, we saw a picture of, guess who was watching it? Mr. McMahon, Mr. Vince McMahon was watching that match, so, yeah. you know, we know he saw firsthand mm -hmm. that, uh, what he can do, and what Sami Zayn can do, even though, you know, his, some of his raw matches, and about that matches haven't been kind of what we're used to seeing from him we know he can deliver you know so yeah it, we know that you know and it, it, i'll just mention this real quick it's interesting i uh, actually heard an interview with charlotte on chris jericho's podcast this last week and um she mentioned about the fact that nxt stars can't just come onto the main roster and be nxt stars they've got to restart they've got to earn the respect they've got to earn their place and that's what Sami Zayn's got to do too. So I mean, I think we got to temper our expectations when it comes to Sami Zayn on the main roster till he gets a little bit more uh, respected, I guess you'd say, on that main roster. So, uh, but you know, looking at that, Sean, you mentioned a couple of people. Uh, you mentioned uh, Vince right there watching. We also had some other people in the crowd, and we spotted you spotted him pretty early, Sean yourself. Uh, Jim Ross was in the crowd uh, watching this whole thing go down, and also you had Michelle Beadle. Uh, there as well. We also had Stephanie McMahon uh, being spotted. So we've got a, a cast of people there in the crowd excited about watching it. And uh, I'm going to wait. Uh, I'm going to save the other person we saw yeah. until we get to that match. But there's somebody else we saw that we're like, whoa, this is amazing. And the crowd was thrilled to see this person. 
Uh, but, you know, besides that, let's go ahead and move on, though. we got to talk about a women's title match. That's right, the NXT women's title was up for grabs. Bailey holding it, and she went off to face against Asuka. And here we go, guys. We were really curious to see how they were going to handle this, how this was going to go down, because we know the history with Bailey. She's had some excellent matches. I think she had, what, the match of the year for us this past year? Uh, or f- For the Facebook group. For the Facebook group, was, that's yeah. right. So, I mean, she was up there uh, along with Sasha Banks, but now she's facing Asuka, another great talent. This match was one that I think was pretty well done. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Uh, Asuka does win the belt here. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I did not think this was going to happen. I think we predicted it was going to happen. Uh, the ending was a little bit different than I expected, just for me personally. Uh, but I was enjoying it. And th- uh, here's the one thing I'll say. They had a tough battle because it was a battle not between themselves. It was a battle of beating the match that was before them. Mm-hmm. And that was tough to call, follow. That was a very tough match to follow. So I think it was well done. I just think it kind of got overshadowed a little bit. Overshadowed is a word. Um, like you said, they're, they're, Shinsuke and, and Sami Zayn created a long shadow that they had to live in. Uh, I don't know if they're. I don't even think Joe and and Finn would have been able to follow that. And then they, their match was terrific, um, which we'll get to here in a minute. But I, you know, I. I felt that the pacing maybe was a little off here. Um, because for a while there in the opening minutes, it just felt like they were throwing moves. Um, there wasn't a lot of story. And you don't get that story until later where you have Asuka being as dominant as she is and Bailey continually finding a way to get out of her submission holds or blocking a, a, a strong strike coming to her way and then she goes on a little run before Asuka takes back over, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that had, that had something to do with it. And, you, I mean, I'm pretty sure I mean, this is the first time they've ever wrestled each other. Um, I think they've teamed together. I don't know if... I can't remember any tag matches to speak of where they were on the opposite sides. But, um, you know, it's the first meeting, and, and you know, the, you still got something wonderful. It wasn't the match of the year candidate I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with Bailey's promotion looking imminent, I don't know if we're going to get a rematch, but I would love to see one, you know. Yeah, I would be right there with you on that. I'd love to see that rematch if it was going to happen. Um, but, you know, I think you're pointing out the fact that Bailey's probably moving up. And so, I mean, it may be way down the line before we get that opportunity. But, I'm, I mean, I would not be surprised as well as if they gave her the rematch for the NXT Women's title. Maybe she doesn't win it, but, you know, she'd get a rematch at least. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, it yeah. would be like Sasha, right. you know, where she got hers after she already been promoted, and it's possible. I mean, the way that they do uh, the the way that they do this finish with Bailey passing out, uh, not only keeps her strong, and obviously, uh, I, I will say this: uh, Bailey certainly showed some super uh, super Cena tendencies in this this match. Let's you know, to put it mildly, uh, that's certainly someone that they want. To her modeled after it's somebody that we've talked about that many other people have talked about with Bailey possibly being the John Cena of the women's division moving forward and you could certainly see it just in the way she was uh, the reaction that she got the, mm-hmm. the way the crowd was they were certainly cheering her more than they were Asuka and giving her the benefit of the doubt and things and uh, they were willing to boo Asuka when, when Bailey lost the belt, you know, and uh, maybe it is, some people were saying it's anticlimactic the way that it ended a little bit, you know, just because Bailey, Bailey was fighting, 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 and then just kind of randomly, oh, well, she just gave up there, uh, but I, I enjoyed the match for what it was, I felt it was Bailey trying to kind of match Asuka and what she's doing in the submission thing, and yes, she did beat Nia Jax with that guillotine choke which she brings out in the match, um, I thought, you know, she just, it was a little bit try, kind of, it pushed her out of her element a bit. She got caught in trying to do a little bit too much. And Asuka was able to, because she's the submission spouse, because she worked on her neck, because she worked on other things, was able to take advantage, you know, take advantage and get the win. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah. I mean, and that now we sort of have this, it feels like, anyway, this, this women's division reset. You know, that's going to happen now with Asuka sort of being that that leader of the new breed coming in mm-hmm. and the ones that are there. And 
what, what, whether you're tying in the models and, and the ones that are going to come. And so, you know, and we still have some that we, we haven't really even seen. Like when, you know, we haven't seen Athena yet. Yeah. You know, we, mm -hmm. so, I mean, there's, it's good. It's going to be interesting in fall and whoever else they bring in here. If, I, th I mean, not only the new faces, but the people and the, and the women that step up that they already have on there. Um, some of these girls that you've seen, um, sort of just jobbing obviously they're gonna have to step up and, and be those next faces and you know obviously you're gonna have to push alexa bliss more now you have to push naya um god forbid we have to push even marie more but that's probably imminent anyways um she could be main roster again now but they gave her that wrestlemania spot gone is the hope where we're yeah. after. uh sean <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope yeah but I mean, it should be a fun time, you know, for the women's division. You see who uh, who steps up, who really grows, who the crowd gets attracted to, and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Yeah. So. I yeah, I mean, the standard has been set now, Gary. I mean, mm -hmm. lots of lots to live up to for these girls. Huh? Yeah, you know, and I agree with that. And you know, it's going to be up to them to do exactly what the girls before them did, and that is make their own path, make sure that that division looks strong, and work hard. Uh, you know, what we saw come out of NXT already was three women who will be facing off against each other for the biggest title, you know, in the company when it comes to the women. And that's great. And that shows a lot because it was, what, a year ago? We were just talking about them fighting for the NXT women's title mm -hmm. not long ago. That's a big deal. Um, we've seen Sasha Banks crying in front of the stadium thinking, wow, this is a dream come true because she sees her picture along with her friends. You know, they're about to have this big match. And, you know, what interests me out of this whole thing is they paved the way. And Bailey herself has paved the way. I, in a way, I kind of feel like Bailey was not held back because she can't be a main Rams roster star. I think she was held back because she was too valuable mm -hmm. to the NXT brand. And to what they needed her to do and who she, she could be to them, you know. And uh, she was a special person and them losing her is going to be a big deal. That's why we're saying this. Why we do need these other stars to step up and really do what their, you know, potential is supposed to really be. Uh, but, you know, saying all that, I mean, I, I think it's exciting. I think it's something that's going to have to happen. But I think also it opens so many doors for people that, you know, have the talent, we just don't know it. We have not got a chance to see it. And I'm sure, Paul, you've seen some of these women on the indies, and you know they got the talent. Mm -hmm. You just got to wait till they're ready to get to that uh, spot where they, you know, definitely deserve. So, Or, you know, maybe just give them the opportunity, you know. Mm -hmm. you know like I said, a lot of these girls have just been jobbing. Uh, like the, the Australian contingent that they signed up, for example, what, uh, Jesse McKay and, and uh, I forget, I'm forgetting the other one. Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce, yeah. Uh, who am I forgetting? Is it Sarita? Or, I, uh, Sarita's the coach. Not Sarita. Who am I thinking? There was, there's a young lady who's been facing off uh, for the last two or three weeks that was from TNA. Um, oh, also, um, Santana Garrett. Santana Garrett. Another talent there. You can just tell oozing with talent. It has mm -hmm. the athletic ability. But it has not got the chance to really showcase. Well, I mean, they'd have to sign her first. Yeah, they would. Yeah. But I think that they would now because of that talent. But, you know, we'll see. That's their decision, not mine. But I would. I'd already have the paperwork in hand. Uh, so, you know, going past that, guys, I mean, this is going to be exciting to see what the future holds for the, you know, the women's division in NXT and a lot of the good stuff coming out of that. Uh, but we got to move on to the last match on this card. Uh, and that is, of course, Finn Balor in the NXT Championship facing off against Samoa Joe. And, you know, we're going to talk about this match and kind of get into what we think, but I want to throw this out there. Before these guys even step foot in the ring, they pan to a certain superstar, Bobby Roode, out in the audience. Now, man. And they give, they give him a nameplate, too. So, yeah. Wow. And, and, Sean, when we saw this, I mean, this was out of the blue because they've already set the match up. They've already did the promo video. You're just waiting for, like, all night long. Hit the first guy's music. Doesn't happen. Bobby Roode's pictures, he, he's right there. Uh, his, the nameplate, like you said, it's exciting. You, The crowd went crazy. Mm -hmm. They were loving this. They were chanting his name. Uh, this is something I think is exciting. You need stuff like this, and I hope that paperwork for him is on hand as well. Hopefully Triple H is behind the scenes saying, hey, just 
gave him sign it. Uh, so we'll see. But that's a big deal. And, and guys, looking at Bobby Roode, what can he offer this NXT roster? Uh, what what couldn't he offer? <laughs> that's the real question. Uh, the great talker, amazing wrestler, the whole package, really. The, like The it factor has never applied better to any wrestler in the history of ever. Like, he's just got everything that you want. And I don't know how they never signed him sooner unless he just really thought TNA was going to be something and then, you know, they're at where they're at now. Um, but, yeah, Bobby Roode, if, if he if he hadn't signed a contract by the time his butt hit that chair, there's a problem. There's a big problem. Yeah. And, Sean, I mean, they need guys like this because, you know, young wrestlers can't get better unless they face off against guys that have been in the business a long time. Oh, no, you're right. Time. You're right. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, Bobby Roode is going to be there, just like the Austin Aries, just like the Smola Joes, mm-hmm. uh, you know. You can say that WWE's using the TNA talent to put over their guys or whatever, but they're loved. James Storm comes in and, you know, the ball doesn't like him, but the crowd went nuts Mm -hmm. for him being there. And that shows that at least with our contingent here, the people that pay attention to everything in wrestling, you see a guy from TNA come to NXT and it's a big deal, Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it's just another person you can bring in, even though they're, yes, they're on the older side of their career, and you can make them a star for your promotion. Somebody that you can take on these traveling shows that you have now. Uh, you can take them on the road, and you can sell tickets for them. You say, I want to see Bobby Roode in NXT. Mm-hmm. Oh, this Bobby Roode guy, I heard him in TNA all the time. My friend told me I got to watch some of his matches. Oh, now I can watch him in NXT with... All these other people, you know, just, uh, this is great. This is great. I, mean, I thought they were going to kind of take a little while with them. I wonder if Eric Young is going to be involved at all. I wonder if he's Global Cruiserweight Series and they're just kind of wait to announce him or something. Um, we'll have to see. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Paul mentioned Dakota Bushi, he got the same treatment. So, uh, he, Funaki was next to him and... He didn't get the big ovation, you know, because we didn't see... But Bobby Roode, they showed Bobby Roode on the screen. Mm-hmm. They didn't show Ibushi on the screen for us. Uh, I had to kind of see him there next to JR, and then uh, the crowd start, a little bit of a crowd started chanting Ibushi for Ibushi. And so that leads me to think that maybe he's not just Global Cruiserweight Series. Mm-hmm. Because the other guys, it's only been shown on .com... They haven't really announced it on any kind of other platform. So, you know, that's how they introduced Asuka. That's how they introduced Apollo Crews. That's how they introduced so many of these guys. Man. Hideo Tommy. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. it's exciting. Just overall. The, you know, that's what, once again, we keep talking about WrestleMania weekend. That's what makes this weekend so great. Because you get these new influx of stars. And this year, it is a Christmas gift after Christmas gift. Uh, because these are people we've been asking and wanting to see on the, w- the WWE roster, NXT roster, anywhere you can get them. And, and, you know, once again, two months ago, you would have told me that Nakamura is going to be stepping in the foot in, in a WWE ring. I would have laughed at you. I would have said, there's no way. New, New Japan will never let that guy go. And see him facing off against Sami Zayn, it's a dream come true. And it's something that's exciting because he's going to be facing off against guys when Bobby Roode gets into business. Uh, with WB, it's going to be exciting to see him face off against guys kind of like a Sami Zayn or whoever else on that roster. Uh, so, and, you know, this is good stuff. I'm excited about it. Oh, uh, you know, what I enjoy about it, too, is that you're you're seeing a guy like a Nakamura, like a Bobby Roode or like, like whoever, they've already done all they can do for those companies that they're coming from. So you're kind of getting to see them in the same coat of paint, sort of, mm-hmm. different settings. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. you know, the, so it's it's not like when they take the indie guy and we go, oh crap, they're gonna ruin it. Mm-hmm. You know? The the big thing that I think is the best payoff for Shinsuke signing is that any time he wrestles, it's gonna feel like this big giant event. I mean, you think about it, Shins, you know, Nakamura against Smojo, Nakamura against Austin Aries, Nakamura against Bobby Roode, Nakamura against a, a, a broom made in America. I mean, <laughs> you're going to sell some tickets. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, that broom got an ovation. I eat you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, this is exciting, guys. And, you know, we'll definitely have to see how this all goes down. 
Uh, well, let's finish this thing out with, you know, this the, the NXT Championship bout. And uh, we get a pretty darn good bout here. I How could you not? I mean, Finn Balor, excellent. You know, Joe's been in the business forever. Uh, great talent. I mean, these guys showcased it. They really put it all on the line. Uh, got a little bloody early. That headbutt got a little serious there. You get a little blood... Uh, but you know, that's okay. And that's something, you know, we, you know, even Sean, we heard some chants that I love, let them bleed, let them bleed. <laughs> uh, you know, of course that's not going to happen at WWE right now, but, uh, of course we also got FPG. <laughs> uh, there's lots of, uh, and PG sucks. Yeah. PG sucks. Let's be honest. Uh, this crowd was really intense with the language and this was not a PG crowd at all. And so... <laughs> Just to throw that out there, if you watched it on the network, you know what we're talking about. If you were there live, you really know what we're talking about. Understatement so. <laughs> of the I've yet to be to I've been to th- two shows and I watched NXT. I've yet to hear a clean show. It is wow. profanity everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so this WrestleMania is going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, us hardcores don't care about language. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's just let it go, right? Uh, but you know, this match. I mean, what did you think about it, Paul? Uh, I mean, this, this. I think this was better than their London match. Personally, I enjoyed it much more. It's much more hard hitting. Mm-hmm. Um, you have, you know, the Joe of old, almost seeming re- seemingly resurrected out of the page of history. You know, it's just. I mean, the the, the strikes in this match were off the charts, painful. Um, the chops, the the enziguris, the, the the straight right hands that he just hit and Finn with. Um, and it's really funny that it's just like a simple little graze against the head whenever he's going in for something is what cuts him so badly. Um, but I think that added so much to the match, even though it, there's interruptions, mm-hmm. the way they were going at it, it almost felt like they needed the breaks. Like it was almost like an MMA fight, you know, it's just, it's just that physical. Um, yeah, and Finn going over surprised me. I really thought they were going to get the belt to Joe here. Um, cause now I think you're starting to the toe the territory that you have with Dean. Like it, if Joe can't win the big one, what, what's he, what's he really going to bring to the table anymore? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm right there with you because Samoa Joe came into this as a guy that has been a former champion, a guy that's highly respected. He's won tons of matches. It's just almost like he is exactly what you're talking about here. You know, I mentioned it last night that he's the bridesmaid, never the bride. And that's something we don't want to see. We want to see this guy flourish. We want to see him win gold. And I think he will. I really have a hard time believing he won't. If it's not in NXT, I think we're going to see him win a U.S. title, an IC title, somewhere in that. If that's all they're willing to do with him. But I well, think he's what if uh, they decide to bring Joe to the main roster? Then if they're not going to have him win, yeah, I mean that's a, that's a my problem right now. But of course, we know that the main roster they consider different, so they're going to say that's a clean slate. But for it's, us fans, it's, it's interesting not. because you know they. It seems like they've been waiting for this Samoa Joe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so now that we have the full color palette of all the Joe possibilities that we have the full range, okay, we know what Joe can do. Let's put him up there. You know, mm-hmm. maybe. I mean, why have him be champion if he's not going to be there? Right, right. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, that's a fair point, too. Um, I think when it comes to Joe, though, whenever you look at that kind of contract that he signed and what sort of set the model for, like, you know, guys like an Aries or guys like, uh, you know, maybe how Bobby Roode's going to sign or... or these bigger named guys that come from TNA or have these big, big names that lend a lot of credence to the independents. Um, you know, what, how's how's that going to work if you bring them up to the main roster? Do you have to change the deal? Do you have to renegotiate? Like what, what's the plan here? Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's not to say that Finn couldn't still show up because, you know, we've seen Kevin Owens run around. He's had the NXT championship on screen. I think so is Neville. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not a, so tricky a situation, I guess. It's just one that we expected, I guess, maybe to be a bit cleaner. Yeah. A, a clean cut, like, you know, TakeOver Dallas is going to be this amazing show, but after it, NXT is sort of having a changing of the guard. Mm-hmm. And that's that's not entirely what we're getting, you know. Exactly. And, you know, it kind of goes back uh, to what you're saying. Yeah, we got that for two of the divisions. Mm-hmm. We didn't get that for the main one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that thought process, and me and Sean were also discussing this at the show, and we were kind of figuring this thing out. 
And I think it makes sense for what we were discussing is the fact that, you know, if you, let's just say, cut those cords clean, like you do Bailey and then you do Finn, it's almost a pointing an arrow to, hey, we're going to see them this weekend another time. Mm-hmm. We're going to see them on WrestleMania or Raw. And maybe they don't want that to be known. If Finn's still the NXT champion, people will say, well, maybe that's not happening. Maybe what I'm thinking is in doubt, because why would they bring him up as an NXT And I mean, they do have tapings later today. You mm-hmm. know, uh, those could reveal things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you yeah, make a great point, Sean. So as we sit here, uh, you know, this is old news, maybe. Maybe the belt has already changed hands by the time you hear this. So, you know, it's, it all depends on what happens in Access tomorrow or today technically uh so anyway uh but you know this is great Uh, i think that samoa joe definitely if he does stay in the nxt roster i think he does have a bright future still yes he did lose but the the chances of him winning are still high i feel like he's a guy you can be to respect and i think you know if they do want to move him up he's definitely a solid option well i think we can we do remiss we don't talk about uh chainsaw finn ballard oh Mm. yeah you know uh Paul, I mean, I guess that's homage to Texas, right? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's that's where I went with it. Um, he had a, a much cleaner, you know, paint. It was red and blues. Um, I, he looked, you know, Finn was Finn. Mm-hmm. On point, That the the guy you've come to expect from being the top tier NXT guy. Like, there's nobody, I won't say that. There's... There's a few people better than him, but it's not, it's a scant list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, the entertaining the crowd with their entrance, uh, there's a few to beat right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, besides, you know, it, 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 right now he's one of the top guys. It's going to be hard to beat him. Uh, so, but yeah, I did love the chainsaw. I thought it matched perfect. And of course, you know, when we saw him in London doing the top hat thing, you know, kind of playing off the Jack the Ripper thing. I thought, oh, that's probably a one-off thing. No, he's bringing it to Texas, too. I gotta love it. So, um, man, this has been a, a great, you know, uh, show we watch. So, we gotta rate it. You know, we gotta give it, a, you know, a, a really a valid reason why we like them and, of course, that rating. So, uh, Paul, start us off here. What did you think it deserved? Uh, nine and a half. Nine and a half. Um, the, top to bottom, like, to, you know, American Alpha, the, the NXT Tag Team title match, could be considered match of the year. Nakamura, Zane, most definitely match of the year. Uh, Joe Finn, match of the year candidate. I mean, when three fifths of your card is match of the year's candidate, it's 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 hard to, to say anything about it. You know, and the women still delivered delivered very. I mean, very well. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe not as much as I would have liked, but certainly they were still very impressive. Um, Baron Corbin, Austin Aries. You know, not not when you're the worst match on the card at maybe like two and a half stars. That's mm-hmm. A bad day, um, and the the thing I you know the energy in that building was was off the charts, and it has been all around out. You know I've walked around a lot of downtown today, and it, like legitimately wrestling fans have taken over. Dallas is a wrestling town right now. There are eighty thousand, maybe even more fans. There's like they, there might still be fans trolling around the streets right now, and it's it's four thirty in the morning. Um, I'm just it's a, it's an incredible. It's been an incredible day so far, and. Yeah, I mean the 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 noise there. I mean, great. I've only been in buildings with a couple thousand, if that. Um, and certainly, I think you know, the NXT is perfect snapshot of where we're at right now. It's just it's so hot here. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's really cool to see that, and uh, it, it really makes me excited to see what we're going to get at Mania. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I hope that they do break that hundred thousand dollar mark and people and. Um, it, it's going to be, you know, like you said, being in a room with a couple thousand compared to what we're going to get, a hundred thousand. Uh, we got what, like eight, nine thousand at Takeover. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think they were over ten. I think that was ten. I think it was over ten. Wow, and that was a rocking crowd, Sean. So you, know, you were there live. You got to experience this, and of course, you you watched it twice, so you got to experience it double. What did you think about everything that take place, and of course, what's your rating? Uh, I'm gonna say. It's hard because, like what Paul said, you know, it's uh, you got three fifths of your card up there in uh, match quality. You got another one that's not like it's a bad scrub itself. I mean, it's there, and then you've mm-hmm. got the the Baron Corbin and Austin Aries match, and ah, it's hard to say. I think uh, I think I'm I'm gonna go with the nine. Um, 
I, th- I there's nothing wrong with the show. Mm-hmm. You can watch the show. The two hours fifteen minutes blows by. Um, you know, you get the spectacle and the greatness and a five star match with Shinsuke and and Zayn. You get a a four star tag team title match, maybe even more, uh, depending on you know so so whatever your little intricacies are when you put on the snowflakes. Uh, but definitely, you know, in that, and I think you definitely get anywhere from three. Three and three quarters to four to more of the main event, you know, and the the women's match was that kind of depends on you. I think some people thought it was anticlimactic. Some people, you know, that that whole come down that you get you get with coming after Zayn and and Nakamura, that's gonna happen. But I still think they delivered, and you got a new champion mm-hmm. out of it. You got a new NXT uh, tag title champ, you know, t- tag team champions. Uh, you got Joe fighting till the freaking end with Finn. I mean, he really gave him. He had to do the Bret Hart special pin to get the win. So that's true. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that that shows desperation right there. If there is any others, and uh, it's just a fantastic show. I think uh, you know we were all. I was worried. Many of us were worried about. Oh, Shinsuke and then Zayn's not going to be that match that we're mm-hmm. all expecting. It totally was that match we were all expecting. Uh, you know, some of the other matches maybe we thought were going to be, like, grand. Some of them, to under, you know, over-delivered. You know, mm-hmm. just, so, I mean, just, and then the, the crowd cannot be uh, not discussed when yeah. you're talking about this show. Just, they were blazing throughout. You may not get to hear them as loud as we got to hear them being in the crowd uh, with the with the network. But it is it is still, this is one of those shows where, the crowd also helps make the show what is it, especially uh, the Zayn and Nakamura match is special because mm-hmm. that crowd reacts to literally everything that is happening mm-hmm. at any moment, and it is it is amazing to watch. Uh, definitely, and I totally agree with that, and I think that adds to the spectacle. Uh, I kind of wanted to take this from both perspectives because I was there live, and sometimes the emotions, the crowd reactions, everything around you builds it up even more you know it, it gives you that perspective that maybe something's greater than it really is and of course coming home sitting down watching it on the network getting a chance not to be in the crowd and watch it again it still holds water mm-hmm. still holds as much emotion still holds everything that i kind of sat there at the event and felt so to me that proves not only is the crowd great but what happened in the ring was just as great and you know if really i mean not a bad match on the card. We talked about Corbin and Aries not being the best, but once again, compared to the rest of it, it can't be. There's no way it can be. So, I mean, I think that, you know, it's got to be a situation where I have to go. I think I'm going to nine as well, guys. I mean, I'm surprised I'm going to say that because I was kind of weighing my options, eight or nine, but what really put it over for me is the fact that not only did we have the great things that happened on uh, the show, but we also had people on the outside to get this crowd excited and really, you know, thinking about the future of this company, uh, like Bobby Roode and Bushi uh, and, and just everybody that you know is there and exciting this crowd. I, I think that's something that really needs to take place on a show like this, and it did. And so that's what thrills me. I, would I have given it a ten for somebody else? Uh, maybe I would if it was EC3. Maybe I would if it was Andy Dalton. Right, you know, the redheaded guy, you know. Dal- <laughs> no, I'm joking. Dalton Castle is one I really would say. Uh, but, you know, maybe those guys would get a 10. But right now, I think it's a 9, and I think it definitely deserves every bit of credibility. Because we all walked out of this very happy. So, you know, it shows a lot when you're willing to watch it twice, right? So, uh, But anyway, well, that pretty much wraps up our show for NXT TakeOver Dallas. I mean, this has, you know, been a fun night, you know. <laughs> Just getting to enjoy great wrestling. Uh, Paul has had a full day of wrestling himself. He's going to have more tomorrow along with Sean. These guys are going to go see some other shows tomorrow. Shimmer, uh, you're going to go see some. What else? What are you guys seeing uh, So it's Evolve at noon, uh, Shimmer at 4, and then the uh, the WWN Super Show at 8. Um, and there's also the WrestleCon Super, Super Show is tomorrow night too. Uh, I think they're, uh, Ring of Honor is doing their television tapings mm-hmm. tomorrow. Um, NXT is doing their television tapings tomorrow. Like the, the, it's the madness isn't stopping. Like, you know, it's going to crescendo at Sunday, and then somehow all that extra stuff is going to spill into Monday. And 
I, we might be dead. I might be dead. I, like, <laughs> I might not be here Thursday yet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Ooh, that's risky. Uh, so. There's also a legit Lucha show that's happening, I think, in yeah. Baybrook uh, called Martinez something or another. Uh, some of the Lucha Underground guys are going to be there. So I think some uh, of the Lucha Underground guys are supposed to be at the WrestleCon yeah, show, too. Be, yeah. Wow. So Lots of great stuff. You know, oh, that might have been today. Uh, that might have been Friday. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but... It's, it's, you know, it's it's uh, it's crazy how all these shows, you know, they benefit, and we we get to be the beneficiary of them mm-hmm. uh, to to see all this great talent together. You know? Yeah, definitely. So I mean, it's a great time to be in Dallas. Let's be honest. And uh, yeah, this has been a fun weekend so far, and it just started. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to the rest of our weekend. And I want to remind everybody, you know, we're not going to be doing anything Saturday night. Uh, everybody's going to get a break. They're going to get a chance to kind of cool down a little bit. We need to sleep too, guys. Yeah, (laughs) we have to sleep sometime. Uh, So we're going to get a break on Saturday night, but we will be back on Sunday night following WrestleMania. We're going to start earlier than 4 o'clock in the morning, we promise. Uh, The reason we did is because we started, you know, we all went to different shows, had to watch this show together. Uh, But, you know, of course, after WrestleMania, we'll be done with that, come back and just sit down and, Hash it out. See what all uh, our thoughts were, the predictions that were right, predictions that were wrong. Uh, get into all this, WrestleMania 32. And then, of course, the next night, we are all going to Raw. We're going to have a great time. I'm excited about that. And, of course, Monday night, we'll do the same thing. We'll come home, sit down, and we will hash this thing out, and we will talk about really what the, this next year is going to look like because that's what the Monday night Raw following WrestleMania does every year. So, I'm thrilled about it. I know you guys are excited about it, and I hope everybody listening is excited about it. And we are gonna, just going to have a fun weekend this weekend. We hope you guys that are out there in Dallas right now are having a blast. We hope that you go and do everything you can in the city, uh, not only wrestling-wise, but whatever else that Dallas has to offer. They have tons to offer, so go chant, you know, enjoy everything the city has to offer. Uh, if you're not, if you're not, you know, in this area. Man, just you know, sit back and watch the network. Watch whatever you can. Uh, the, I know the Fight Network actually uh, it was the Fight uh, app uh, that Jim Ross always promotes. I mean, you can see some of these shows that you know Paul's going to go see, Sean's mm-hmm. going to yeah. go see. WWN's going to have yeah. theirs live. Yeah. All theirs are on the live IP review. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So there you go. So you don't have to miss WrestleMania weekend just because you know you're. Uh, in Ohio, and you didn't get a chance to come down. Go check out that stuff. Go support, you know, the independent wrestling that way. And of course, you know, enjoy WrestleMania yourself. So we will be back Sunday night. And uh, well, and anything. Hall else? of Fame too on Saturday. That's right, Hall, Hall of Fame. Fame. You know, that'll be a big deal, and I can't wait for us to get a chance to dab into that too. We'll probably talk about that on Sunday night as well. So, uh, anything else, Sean? Before we get out of here. Ah, uh, you know, just uh, right now, we uh, just. Taking this road to on on to WrestleMania and, and doing these shows and mm-hmm. you know well we'll be back in touch on Sunday night after WrestleMania really yeah. subscribe to that W10 network so you don't miss a beat on that and uh, some of the other all the other shows are kind of uh, I think I'm sure I'll probably get a message about the Running Wild getting their thoughts on NXT Takeover out there and I won't be able to post it till uh, Sunday probably because I won't get out around a computer then. Until then, but uh, you know, still, um, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have it out there, and and then that's it. That's it. Pretty All much right. everything else. Yeah, and go right and review. Uh, do us that favor, and uh, we, you know, besides that, guys, have a great weekend. So we'll just leave you with this. Always remember, if you're not living life to the max, you're not living life at all. You know it. Please. Later. If I can. Go back to the uh... (laughs) technology.